mass spectrometry. Mass spec can help you determine the molar mass and the chemical formula for a compound. Different mass spectrometers do this different ways, but in all of them they vaporize and then ionize the compound. Once it's ionized it undergoes fragmentation. Some of the fragments are ions. The ion fragments are detected and graphed. In one kind of mass spec, ionization is achieved by bombarding the sample with a beam of high energy electrons, around 70 electron volts. The electron beam comes in and knocks out one electron of a sigma bond. And you end up with a radical cation. The CC bond now only consists of one electron, and the overall fragment has a charge of plus one. This is called the molecular ion. It has the same mass as the original compound. A sigma bond that consists of only a single electron is unstable. So that single electron can associate itself with either half of the molecule or with either fragment. The side it associates with becomes a radical, and the side that lost the electron becomes a carbocation. It is the carbocations, the positively charged fragments, that are detected by the mass spectrometer. Here's a mass spec schematic. Sample molecules are injected then they're heated by a coil and pass through a slit. Then the electron beam is passed through the sample beam and ionization and fragmentation takes place here. Then a series of charged plates with a slit in them cause acceleration of the fragments. And so the fragments pass through a magnetic field. Now this is where the resolution takes place. The greater the mass, the less the path of these particles is bent by the magnetic field. There's actually a detector array with a bunch of little cups in it that are lined up side to side. The more the fragment is bent, the further in one direction it goes. So, if it has a lower mass, it gets bent more and strikes this detector. If it has a slightly higher mass, it gets bent less and strikes this detector. And so you have a whole array, and each time one of these little detectors is struck, you get a single count of a signal at a particular mass-to-charge ratio. And there's one detector for each mass-to-charge ratio. Shown here is the mass spectrum of methane. And this spectrum shows the relative abundance of each cation that was detected. So for methane, the most abundant cation is at a mass-to-charge ratio of 16. So the tallest peak in the spectrum corresponds to the most abundant fragment, and that's called the base peak. Again, that's at m over z equals 16. For methane, the base peak is the parent ion, and the parent ion is the methane cation radical. A cation because it's missing one electron. Radical because one of these CH bonds just consists of a single electron instead of a pair. And then you'll notice there's a peak at 15. The peak at 15 corresponds to the cation produced when the electron goes with the hydrogen. So the peak at 15 is the methyl cation. Right, and this, this m over z number 
that's just the sum of the atomic mass numbers 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 16 and 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 15. What about the peak that is one above the molecular ion? We call that the M plus 1 peak. Uh, 